Good day, fellow educators and students! Welcome back to my channel! It's me again, Sir Ken, your certified content creator for education. Please join me in this special episode because we will be discussing non-parametric methods or non-parametric statistics. More specifically, this has something to do with the what we so-called Kruskal Wallis test. Do you want to know more about this type of non-parametric test? So without further ado, let's get started! What is a non-parametric statistics? The term non-parametric statistics refers to comparative properties of the data or population which do not include the typical parameters of mean, variance, standard deviation, etc. And it do not rely on data belonging to any particular distribution. The Kruskal-Wallis test or the Kruskal-Wallis H test is another way on how we can find the significant difference between three or more groups of data that came from independent samples. So on a regular parametric statistics, you probably learned about something called the one-way ANOVA that tests the equality of three or more populations. While... The Kruskal-Wallis test is basically the same thing or the non-parametric version of that test. The data used in this test are not normally distributed. Therefore, the appropriate level of measurement should be under ordinal scale. In order for us to perform a Kruskal-Wallis test, let's have this example. This is a title of a research, Satisfaction Ratings in Assistance to COVID-19 Lockdown. So we have three groups of people. We have the lower class, the middle class, and the upper class. So I assigned colors for each group for us to identify it easily. Red for lower class, blue for middle class, and yellow for upper class. In here, three groups of participants rate their satisfaction in assistance during COVID-19 lockdown. The rating scale is from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So let's have the step 1, arrange the whole data from lowest to highest and assign ranks to them. So you will treat the data as 1. So here we are. We are going to write all the ratings from lowest to highest. Remember, whenever there are ties, what you're going to do is to get the average of their ranks, especially in number 3, number 4, number 5, and number 7. So in ranking, the lower the number, the lower the rank. And the higher the number, the higher the rank. So let's have a, a, a rating of 1. We have a ranking of 1. Rating of 2. We have a ranking of 2. So we have 2 ratings of 3. So we will have 3.5 and another 3.5. So let's have a rating of 4, we have 5.5, and another 5.5. So let's have 2 ratings of 5, we have a ranking of 7.5, and another 7.5. Rating of 6, we have a ranking of 9, and then 3, 3 ratings of 7, we have ranking of 11, 11, and 11. So ranking of, uh, rating of 8, we have 13. For 9, we have 14. And the last one, 10, we have 15. 
So let's put the ranking of the three groups to the respective column. Okay, for the for the lower for the lower class, we have 11, 9, 13, 11, and 7.5. For the middle class, we have 5.5, 1, 3.5, 4.5, 2, 11, and 14. For the upper class, we have 15, 7.5, 2, 3.5, and 5.5. Then we need to get the sum of the rank. So add 11, 9, 13, 11, and 7.5 for us to get the rank sum of 51.5 for lower class. Let's do the same thing in middle class. So we have the rank sum of 35. And for the upper class, we have 33.5. So next step, step 2, determine the degree of freedom, the alpha level, or the level of significance. So we're going to use this formula for us to get the degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom is equals to k minus 1 where k is the number of groups. So we have three groups. So three minus one, we have two. So two is our degrees of freedom. And let us assume that our alpha level or level of significance is at 0 0.05 or 5%. Step 3. Determine the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. For the null hypothesis, the satisfaction ratings of lower, middle, and upper class are just the same. For the alternative hypothesis, the satisfaction ratings of lower, middle, and upper class are not the same. Let us find the critical value using the chi-square distribution table. We will be needing the degree of freedom and the alpha level of 0 0.05. The degree of freedom of 2 and the alpha level of 0 0.05 will give us critical value of 5.991. Let's move on to step 4. We need to state the decision rule. If h computed is greater than or equal to critical value, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Step 5, computation of the H value. We will be using this formula. So H is equal to 12 divided by N multiplied by N plus 1 times the summation of R square over N minus 3 multiplied by N plus 1 where in N stands for the total number of samples or observations and small letter N is the number of samples in a group, while R is the rank sum for each group. So we have the, the total number of samples, which is 15, and the number of samples in a group, we have 5, for lower class, 5 for middle class, and 5 for upper class. And the rank sum, we have 51.5 for lower class, 35 for middle class, and 33.5 for upper class. It's time to compute for the value of H using this formula. We need to substitute the value for each quantity. We're going to do this part by part. We will start with the numbers in green, followed by the numbers in red, and last, the numbers in blue. So 12 divided by 15, 15 is, 15 is the total number of sample, multiplied by 15 plus 1, 
we have 240. So 12 divided by 240, the answer is 0 0.05. Let's proceed to the numbers in red. We're going to get the square of these numbers. So 51.5 multiplied by 51.5, the answer is 2,652.25. 35 times 35, the answer is 1,225. 33.5 times 33.5, the answer is 1,122.25. So we need to, to divide those numbers from the number of sample in each group, which is number 5. Okay? So, 2,652.25 divided by 5, the answer is 530.45. 1,225 divided by 5 equals 245. 1,122.25 divided by 5, it will give us 224.45. And then, we are going to get the sum of these three. So, adding this 3 will give us the value of 999.9. .9. So, let us now proceed with the numbers in blue. So, 3 times 15 plus 1, the answer is 48. So, bring down 48. 48. Uh, 0 0.05 multiply by 999.9. .9. The answer is 49.995 minus 48. It will give us the value of 1.995. Step 6 is the analysis and interpretation of results. Since H computed is equal to the value of 1.995, it is less than the critical value of H which is 5.991. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Step 7. Stating the conclusion. We therefore conclude that there is no significant difference on the satisfaction ratings of lower, middle, and upper class. Let's take another example. I got this example from the internet. Does physical exercise alleviate depression? We find some depressed people and check that if they are all equivalently depressed to begin with, then we allocate each person randomly to one of the three groups. Group 1 with no exercise, Group 2 with 20 minutes of jogging per day, and Group 3 with 60 minutes of jogging per day. At the end of a month, we ask each participant to rate how depressed they are on a Likert scale that runs from 1 to 100. 1, totally miserable, and 100, x, statistically happy. Step 1, rank all the scores ignoring which group they belong to. We're going to arrange all the ratings from lowest to highest. So we have 22, ranking up 1, 23, 2, 26, 3, 27, 4, 29, 5.5, 29.5, 37, 7, 38, 8, 39, 9, 40, 4, 10, 46, 11, 48, 12, 49, 14, 49, 14, 49, 14, 51, 16, 56.17.5 and another 56.17.5 58 19 59 20 60 21 62 22 65 23 and 66 24 so let's place all the ranking on the respective column for group 1 2 3 16, 14, 19, 7, 5.5, and 10. For group 2, 1, 4, 9, 5.5, 11, 
12, 14, and 23. For group 3, 20, 24, 8, 14, 17.5, 21, 17.5, and 22. So we need to get all the rank sum of the three groups. For group 1, we have 76.5. For group 2, we have 79.5. And for group 3, we have 144. Step 2, determine the degree of freedom, the alpha level, or the level of significance. Df is equals to k minus 1, where k is the number of groups so we have three groups here so three minus one the answer is two so our degree of freedom is two and our level of significance or alpha level is at 0 0.05 step three determine the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis for the null hypothesis the depression ratings of group 1, 2, and 3 are just the same. For the alternative hypothesis, the depression ratings of group 1, 2, and 3 are not the same. So let's find the critical value using the chi-square distribution table. We will be needing the degree of freedom of 2 and the alpha level of 0 0.05. And it will give us the critical value of 5.991. Let's move on to step 4. State the decision rule. If H computed is greater than or equal to the critical value, we need to reject the null hypothesis. Step 5 is the computation of the H value. For the, for the total number of samples, we have 24. For the number of samples in a group, we have 8 for each group. And for the rank sum, we have group 1, 76.5, group 2, 79.5, and group 3, 144. Okay, based on our computation, we will get the value of 7.271. Step 6 is the analysis and interpretation of results. Since H computed is equivalent to the value of 7.271, it is greater than the critical value of 5.991, therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Step 7. Stating the conclusion. We therefore conclude that there is a significant difference on the depression ratings of group 1 with no exercise, Group 2 with 20 minutes of exercise and Group 3 with 60 minutes of exercise. The longer the time you spend in doing exercise, the better you cope up with depression. So 60 minutes of exercise is better comparing to 20 minutes and no exercise at all. Thank you very much and God bless. And here are my references that I use in this video.